Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Mechanics C. Today I want to go over an example of simple harmonic and rotational motion. A uniform rod of mass m and length l is pivoted at a point at distance l over 3 from the top, uh, from the top end as shown. The rod is pulled back so that it makes a small angle with the vertical and then released. Use integral calculus. Show that rotational inertia for the rod around its pivot, which is L over 3, is ML squared over 9. So let's take a look how we're supposed to do it. Uh, since we have to use integral, I think it's easier to find the, in, uh, the inertia around the center of the mass because it's kind of like symmetrical. Once we have I center of the mass, we can use this equation parallel theorem to find the rotational inertia around any a pivot point. So let's see how do we find I center of the mass for a rod. This is a general equation for to find rotational inertia for the integral is m r squared. You simply add everything together. So for a rod, you'll have your dm is just a little piece of mass and this the rotational inertia for this mass is dm times x squared and the size of this dm is dx so we simply break this rod into tiny pieces then we add all the moment of inertia together so this is what integral means to add so what is dm this is integral with x we have to write dm's in terms of dx. So how do we do that? We use um, density. The density of the rod is uniform, so the density is the same. The density for the whole rod is m over l. The density for this little piece is dm over dx. So dm actually equals to m over l times dx. Now we can substitute in. I center of the mass is dm, which is m over l dx times x squared. I switched x squared and dx, so you can see this is integral of x squared dx. And where is x starting from negative l over 2 to the positive l over 2? So if this is 0, this side would be negative l over 2, and you go to the right, it becomes positive l over 2. m over l is constant. You can factor it out. Then this is just the integral of x squared dx. We know that. That is just one-third x cubed. And you use the, the value from the top minus the value from the bottom. So 2 cubed is at, uh, 8. And minus, this is negative 1 cubed is still negative. Minus negative becomes positive. So it's 1 eighth plus 1 eighth is 1 fourth. So 1 fourth times 1 third, that's 1 twelfth. That's where 1 twelfth coming from. And here's L cubed on the top. Divide by L, that's where L squared coming from. So the answer is 1 twelfth and L squared. But that is just I center. We have to find IP. IP equals I center plus MD squared. In this case, D is from the center to the uh, pivot. So here is the center, here is the pivot, and the distance between them is d. How far is between the center to the pivot? That's l over 2 minus l over 3. Because from here to the top is l over 2, from pivot to the top is l over 3, d equals l over 6. Plug that in, ip equals 1 twelfth, ml squared, that's i center plus md square, squared, d is l over 6. So 1 twelfth plus 136 is 1 ninth ml squared. And that's how you find L, um, P. Next part. Using Newton's second law in rotational form to write, but do not solve a differential equation in terms of M, L, and physical constants is appropriate. That can be used to determine the angular displacement theta as a function of time. So Newton's second law in rotational form is net torque equals to I alpha. What is producing the torque in this case? That is gravity. Gravity is the one producing the torque. So what is torque equals to? Torque equals gravity times this d times sine theta, the angle between the two. But 
when theta is positive, torque is negative. Torque is always opposite of your theta. Hence, you have a negative here. So mg times d times sine theta. That equals to i, which is 1 ninth ml squared right over here, times alpha. To alpha in the differential equation, alpha equals to d squared theta over dt squared. So we know this is a small angle rotation, so sine theta is approximately theta. Now we substitute theta uh, to sine theta. We, we also see how m and m cancel l, and this, this is l squared, that part cancel. 6 and 9 has a common denominator, 3, so this becomes 2, this becomes 3. So simplify this on the left, you have negative g 1 half theta. On the right, you have one third L times D squared. This part is just alpha. So the derivative, the differential equation is D squared theta over DT squared equals negative 3G over 2L times theta. B part 2. Using the differential equation in B part B1, this is differential equation. Show that period of oscillation for the rod is given by this expression. So we know this is simple harmonic motion. In simple harmonic motion, period and angular um, frequency is related by this relationship. T equals to 2 pi divided by omega. We also know alpha equals to negative omega squared times theta. And alpha equals to d squared theta over dt squared. Compare these two equations. You can see omega squared equals to 3g over 2l. So omega equals the square root of 3g over 2l. Plug omega here. When you divide, you multiply it's reciprocal. So t equals 2 pi reciprocal of omega is square root of 2l over 3g. Next part. An experiment is performed with thin uniform metal rods of different length, each pivoted around one third of the length of the rod from the top top end, and it is used as a physical pendulum, as shown. Each rod is pulled back so that it makes a small angle with a vertical and is then released. The period of oscillation is me measured. The data are recorded in this uh, data table. Part C indicate below which quantity should be graphed to yield a straight line with a slope that could be used to calculate the value of g. So let's see what is the relationship between period and length. We learned from last um, part, part a, t equals 2 pi, 2l over g, or this part b2. So how do we graph a linear relationship? So you can say it's t versus square root of l, it's because t is directly proportional to square root of l. You, or you can say you can square both, t squared is proportional, directly proportional to L. So I've chosen T squared proportional to L. So horizontal can be L, vertical is just T squared. Or you can say horizontal is square root of L, vertical is just T. That's fine also. Now we will have to use the remaining rows in the table above as needed to record any quantities you indicated that are not given. In this case, I have to find period squared. So it's t squared. I simply square each value over here. So these are the value I have. And those values are important because the next question, I have to use those values to do graphs. Plot a straight line data points on a graph below. Clearly scale and label all axes, including units, if appropriate. Draw a straight line that best represents the data. So we have to get our data table. This is data table we obtained before. Now we have to scale and label all axes. We know horizontal should be the length, vertical should be the time. And here is the scale. The length is from uh, point of zero kind of to 2.5 and the period up to 6.8. So this is the scale. We need to do the points, okay, as accurately as you can. Then you need to draw a best fit line. Remember this line you don't have to connect to zero. So next part is to use this straight line to determine the value of g. Let's go back to our equation. 
t squared equals to 8 pi squared um, divided by 3g times l. So in this equation, the slope is 8 pi squared over 3g. To find g, we can simply uh, use 8 pi squared divided by 3 times the slope. So to find g, we have to find slope. Slope. To find slope, we need to choose the points on the line. So I want to choose the points doesn't have to be a data point. I want to choose the points has to be on the line. I choose these two points because it's most convenient for me. And I do my slope. Do not forget your units. So 6 minus 4, those are the vertical and the corresponding horizontal. Once I find a slope, I simply substitute my slope to find g. And that's how I do it. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time.